let's go back to the question of what A matrix to use, what weighting matrix to use. We saw the uh, efficient solution, or we saw uh, the idea of you could use any one you want and at least get consistency, if not efficiency. Uh, the A tells you is selects which moments you set to zero. The W says which moments do you ask the minimizer to pay attention to. It's equivalent to an A matrix choice. One way to do it is to think about what you're doing. Which moments are robust? Which moments are important? Um, which moments do you think the model is a good parable for as opposed to a bad parable for? This is where GMM shines. It is a tool that has um, enabled us to, to do this big change in philosophy that's happened in economics and finance over the last 20 or 30 years. And you saw that in the Fama French paper that rather than focus on testing a model, on thinking it's perfectly 100% true in testing it, rather than focus on very formal methods, what we do is we measure models, we evaluate models, we see how well they fit the data while still being sensitive to sampling error questions. We're doing much less of the very formal can we reject it. The same thing is happening in economics. Uh, in economics, uh, calibration has taken over from formal estimation. So for example, in the real business cycle tradition, what they like to do is they will take things like the capital labor ratio or long-term output growth, use first moments of that sort to calibrate the model, to find the parameters uh, like elasticity of sub substitution or labor supply elasticities. Uh, and then they want to evaluate the model on things like standard deviation of consumption, investment, or correlations, uh, things like that. Well, you can do that in GMM. Choose an A matrix where you, you use those moments in order to estimate the parameters, and then these become testing moments. But the calibrate and evaluate uh, doesn't have to forget about econometrics. It doesn't have to forget about sampling variation. Now, why did, they, why did we move to that? Typical economic models can easily be rejected formally. Most economics models have one shock and many variables. So the fact that there isn't a combination of variables that's perfectly correlated will just throw the model out of the water by maximum likelihood. What we want to do, though, is say, well, it's not a perfect model, but it, it fits the data along some interesting dimensions. GMM allows you to do that without giving up on standard errors, without giving up on asking the question, well, how much does the data really tell me about some of the coefficients? And it does the same for us in finance. Now, in finance, uh, M is a scalar. So our G, T of B, our moments, are all M times return. The vector part comes out of the return part. And notice A, G, T of B is the same thing as the expected M, A times return. So when we think about which combinations of moments do we want to set to zero, uh, we are asking exactly the same question as which portfolios do we want to price perfectly? You can state the question the same way. Similarly, if you do a weighted minimization, uh, yeah, any weighting matrix you can express as Q prime Q. So we can express this minimization as E of M times a set of portfolios squared. Uh, when we choose a weighting matrix, it's the same thing as saying, well, which portfolios do we want to pay attention to in, in, minimizing, the, uh, in, in, in minimizing the sum of squared GTs? Now, let's think about the properties of choosing a portfolio that we're going to price perfectly uh, versus the efficient thing, which says, let the statistical uh, gu uh, guide us, the statistical considerations guide us. The first stage, just choosing an arbitrary A matrix, is consistent. And the standard error formulas given by GMM are correct. There is nothing wrong with using an inefficient estimate. The only thing someone can complain about is that another way of doing it might have given you a most precise estimate. But it is only efficient given the choice of moments. And everything we do in finance, we always boil down the thousands and thousands of stocks, bonds, foreign exchange into a few interesting portfolios. So if you're really interested in efficiency, what you should be doing is not thinking about more clever portfolios of what you've got, but gaining more data and putting more asset returns. That's why I think the quest for efficiency doesn't really drive us as much uh, as the quest for something that's robust and that expresses what the model is supposed to do. The quest for efficiency can also be dangerous. In econometrics, uh, in economics and econometrics, 
We've seen lots of cases where efficient estimators throw out the baby with the bathwater uh, and lead to wrong answers. And that's why uh, throughout economics, there's a trend away from formal efficiency and more towards um, robust estimation techniques uh, that, that perform well. So a classic example is OLS versus GMLS, which is exactly what we're doing here. OLS is first stage GMM. GLS is second stage or efficient GMM. So let me remind you how that works. In OLS, we minimize the sum of squared errors, and that leads to the OLS estimator. Oh, you say, wait a minute. What if the errors are autocorrelated and heteroscedastic? Well, still, OLS is consistent and unbiased. There's nothing wrong with the OLS estimate. It's just not efficient enough. Now, the usual standard error formula is wrong, but we know how to correct standard error formulas. We just learned that in the GMM uh, does OLS section. Now, if you ask a statistician about these problems, the statistician will say, well, if the error terms are not, if the covariance matrix of the error terms isn't diagonal, what you should do is do GLS, minimize uh, a, a different weighted combination of error terms, leading to the GLS estimate and the GLS formulas. That's consistent, and it's efficient, and those standard errors are correct. Uh, and that's what you will read in every econometrics textbook about what to do if the errors are autocorrelated or heteroscedastic. But the economist answers, wait a minute, I've tried that, and it was a disaster. Here's a common example for, for uh, if you want some equations. Suppose that y equals x plus u, but the error term is autocorrelated over time. In particular, the error terms are random walk. Well, then, the GLS estimate says first difference. First difference that equation, estimate the differences of y on the differences of x plus an error term that now is uncorrelated over time. The economist says, I tried that and it was a disaster. Here, here's what the data typically looks like. Here's an x and there's a y. And you can see the regression of y on x looks pretty darn good, but the errors are serially correlated over time. If you first difference that data, that's what the y looks like and that's what the x look like. And this beautiful positive correlation got washed away because you're just looking at the noise. Who knows what beta you get out of data that looks like that. The statistician looks at that and says, oh, you didn't tell me the model wasn't 100% right and I'd get a different answer from first differencing it than leaving the levels. Well, that's where we are. Our models are not 100% right. It's important to, to take the models to data along the dimensions that they describe well and not do things that look like efficiency if the model were 100% true, but in fact leave the, story, uh, leave the story out of the data. So increasingly in economics, the right answer in here is to run OLS anyway. It's more robust and use the corrected standard error formulas. Uh, instead of that standard error formula, it's the old standard error formula, the variance of the beta of the OLS beta should be x prime x inverse x prime omega x x prime x inverse. That is, uh, that's a, a version of the same kind of formulas that we studied uh, with GMM. Run OLS, correct the standard errors. That sort of thing is what we're doing all over the place uh, in economics, and as well as econometrics. Um, so bottom line, this is the same as first stage GMM. Uh, a lot of work is going towards robust, thoughtful choices of the A matrix rather than efficient. Uh, if you're going to do efficient, it, it's, it, it's uh, statistically a good thing, but make sure that the efficiency transformations don't throw out the baby along with the bathwater.